العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وسيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, My dear brothers, this morning you uh, studied and you took and you studied uh, the doubts of Muslim Brotherhood in misguiding the Ummah by Ustad Saeed Hassan and then Ustad Abu Dawood uh, went through the methodology of the prophets in according to Allah Azza wa Jal. In today's lecture, inshallah ta'ala, in this lecture, we are going to be looking at the methods of Muslim Brotherhood or the methods of Ikhwan al-Muslimin in misguiding the youth and the callers to uh, al-Islam. <coughs> so this lecture is, bi ta'ala, going to expose how Ikhwan al-Muslimin, their strategies, um, and their underhanded tactics in trying to deceive uh, the Shabab, trying to deceive naive uh, youth when it comes to uh, a da'wah ilallah ta'ala. And yesterday, we learned yesterday that all of the misguided sects to today, or all of the terrorist organizations today, that act in the name of Islam, such as, for example, Daesh, in Arabic they're known as Daesh, in English they're known as ISIS, um, Al-Qaeda or Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, Shabab, all of these terrorist organizations that do these uh, activities or do these terrorist activities, all in the name of Islam, all of them come from this, the womb of Jama'at Ikhwan Muslimin. They all, they were all born from uh, Ikhwan al-Muslimin. And um, this jama'a, this firqa, <coughs> firqa Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they have certain methodologies and they have certain asalib when it comes to misguiding the people. We also learned yesterday that the pillars of Hizbiyah are four. These pillars of Hizbiyah are al-Ahdaf, Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they have certain objectives. We learn from those objectives, or from their main objective, is al-usul ila al-hukum, is to reach and to become rulers themselves, to remove the rulers today, and they themselves become the rulers. And they hide behind um, their supposed, they hide behind the fact that they are calling to the khilafah. Also, we learned that the other pillars of al hizbiya are Al-Wasail, Wal-Masadir, wal rumuz So Al-Wasail means يعني, the methods that they deploy, the methods that they use, and Al-Masadir are their sources, and their al rumuz are their personalities. You learned yesterday <coughs> their rumuz and how misguided their personalities were, or their proponents, or their figureheads. You also learned about their masadir or some of their masadir and how some of their masadir and their sources are filled with dalalat and misguidance. So today inshallah ta'ala we're going to look at some of their wasail. Wasail meaning their methodology, the methods that they use, the methods that they deploy when it comes to misguiding the people. And the reason why we need to know these methods is that we need to be aware of their tricks so that they don't exploit us, so they don't take advantage of our love for the Sunnah. Um, يعني there's, a, there's a famous يعني, uh, method Arabi, عرفتُ الشَّرَّ لَا لِلشَّرِّ وَلَكِنْ لِتَوَقِّيهِ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْرِفِ الشَّرَّ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ يَقَعْ فِيهِ يعني, عَرَفْتُ الشَّرَّ لَا لِلشَّرِّ يعني, I, I know evil, not because I love evil, but in order to protect myself from evil. And you all learned yesterday the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hadith of Hudayf ibn al Yaman, where he said, "كان الناس يسألون رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن الخير وكنت أسأله عن الشر مخافة أن يدركني." The people used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about good things, and I, 
uh, used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam about evil things and bad things. Makhafata an yudrikani for fear that I may fall into these uh, evil things. So it's very important to know about the sabil of the mujrimin, the path of the evildoers. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ Allah says. And this is why we have clarified for you our ayat, our verses, so that you, the sabil of the mujrimin, the path of the evildoers becomes clear for you. And you've all read the Qur'an. The Qur'an contains the stories of previous nations, the stories of nations that Allah Azza wa Jal destroyed, the stories of Ad and Thamud, Ashab al all of the, and how Allah Azza wa Jal sent messengers and prophets to them and cl who clarified to them the Quran and the ayat, but they all um, be rejected their prophets and as a result Allah Azza wa Jal punished them. So, in tilaqan min hadha, so based upon this, let us begin the, the asalib of the ikhwan or the methodology of the ikhwan when it comes to misguiding the youth. The first Uslub, or the first method that the Ikhwan use is that they try to ibadu shabab tawheed. They try to remove the shabab and try to create a barrier between the the youth and them learning tawheed. Them learning tawheed, a tawheed as sahih. Um, from the, as you all know, my brothers, from the unique characteristics of. <laughs> Al-Manhaj As-Salafi or Manhaj As-Sunnah is to call to Tawheed Al-Da'watu ila Tawheed Allah to invite others to the worship of Allah alone without associating any partners with Him and to wage war and oppose shirk in all of its forms, in all of its types Allah Azza wa Jal He created ins and jinn for one purpose as you know and that is for his worship. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And Allah Azza wa Jal, He said, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ What we have not sent مِنْ قَبْلِكَ before you a messenger except that we revealed this message, we revealed to this messenger لا إله إلا الله Allah revealed to this messenger that there is none worthy of being worshipped except him. فَاعْبُدُون that they should worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal said in, in another verse, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ أَنْ وَالْآيَاتُ فِي هَذَا الشَّأْنِ كَثِيرًا So, the manhaj al-Salafi is a manhaj that is based upon inviting to Tawheed and warning the people against shirk. As for Jama'at al-Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they do not place great importance in Tawheed. They don't place great importance in this asal, in this foundation. And this asal and foundation is obviously at Tawheed. And great, they place more importance in making sure that the people follow their flag more than anything. So Jama'at al-Ikhwan al muslimin they place more importance in making sure that everyone comes under their flag or everyone comes under their hizb, comes under their group. That's their main ham. هَذَا هَمُّهُمُ الْأَكْبَرُ وَمَبْلَغُ عِلْمِهِمْ To make sure that everyone follows them. So if, for example, an ikhwani is at the head of a markaz Islamic, for example, an ikhwani becomes the head of an Islamic center or a masjid or a whatever center, right? It could be it could be a little room somewhere, or it could be a major masjid somewhere. His main aim is to make sure that the number of people that pray in that masjid and the number of people that come to his center uh, increases as time goes by. So he will try to do everything in his power to make sure that the surrounding, the community that he's in, more people come to his center and his masjid um, than anywhere else. And he will try to do as, yeah, and whatever is necessary for this to happen. So if, for example, in his center, in his markas, there are the people that come to his center, for example, are a mixture of you know, people who follow different ideologies. So, for example, there may be people who follow a tariqa sufiya, 
They may have mistakes in shirk. They may مثلا, celebrate the Prophet's birthday وسلم, Or they may have other mistakes in bid'ah and shirk. This ikhwani, it's not in his best interest that these people are told the truth or are taught the truth and educated about the truth because he fears that if a Salafi comes and tells people that مثلاً, celebrating the Prophet's birthday وسلم, is a bid'ah, is an innovation, that they will leave his center and leave his markaz and go elsewhere. And go elsewhere. So what is he going to do? He's not going to, he's, he, he's going to do one of two things. Number one, he's either going to, um, uh, he, he's either going to get someone who's not upon the sunnah, someone like him, to teach the people whatever he wants, to program the people in مثلا فضائل الأعمال or مثلا general lectures, umur amma, such as for example, uh, how to love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, general lectures, يعني feel good factor lectures, right? Um, lectures that don't cause people to disperse away from his center. That's, that's the first method he will use. If he can't find someone to do that, he will try to find a naive Salafi da'iyah who isn't aware of what's going on and he will give him a title. He will give him, for example, a lecture title and say to him, I want you to talk about this. And this naive Salaf is going to come <coughs> and he, this Salafi da'iyah may have a, a large following and he may not know what's going on. So the Ikhwani is now killing two birds with one stone. So not only is he يعني, يعني not only is does he have an activity in the masjid a supposed da'wah activity which really doesn't uh يعني, doesn't change from the hand of the people that are there the people will still continue celebrating the prophet's birthday sallallahu alaihi wasallam so nothing changes but outwardly it will it seems that this markaz or this center has a da'wah activity does that make sense Akhwan? outwardly from outsiders when they're looking in People who are looking, يعني, who are outside, they're thinking, oh, mashallah, this place has, has nashat and there is activities, there are things that are going on. So what happens is, um, this, he, he, so that's, he, he benefits this, and he also benefits the fact that that person or that Salafi, Da'iya, his followers are also going to come to that center as well. Does that make sense? So um, he doesn't, so this, all of this is to try to remove the people from learning the correct aqidah and the correct tawheed. So this ikhwani will not come to you and will not say to you, I don't want people learning tawheed. I don't want people learning aqidah. He's not going to tell you this because remember what we learned previously yet last night, that ikhwan al-Muslimin indahum at talawun wa tashakkul. They have talawun. They change stripes to suit the situation that they're in. And you all heard the author of Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu where he said inna ad-dalalata kull ad-dalalata an ta'rifa ma kunta tunkir wa an tunkira ma kunta ta'rif wa iyyaka talawun fa inna deen Allah wahid indeed misguidance or the greatest misguidance is to reject something that you used to accept and to accept something that you used to reject and I warn you from talawun, from changing colors, changing stripes. For indeed the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal is one. So, um, يقول uh, سماحة الشيخ عبد العزيز بن الباز رحمه الله تعالى The great scholar, Al-Imam Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn al-Baz, he says وَأَمَّا الْإِخْوَانَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ فَلَيْسَ لَهُمْ نَشَاطْ وَاضِحْ فِي بَيَانِ التَّوْحِيدِ وَبَيَانِ عَقِيدَةِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ Shaykh Abdul Aziz ibn Abaz, he was asked about Ikhwan al-Muslimin and he said, as for Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they, they don't have a clear agenda and a clear nashat wadih. Their nashat, they don't have activities or they don't have any um, effort and juhud in, when it comes to clarifying Tawheed and also teaching people and clarifying the aqeedah of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is Bil Ijma'ah. So, what I'm saying to you, my brothers, instead of you asking me, مثلا, telling me, Al Markaz al Fulani, are they Ikhwani or not? Al -mar -ash -as this person is he Ikhwani or not? Look at their actions, don't look at their words. 
Because the Ikhwan will come up to you and he will say to you, I call to Tawheed. I, we do call to the Aqeedah. Don't listen to what they say. Look at what they do. Because if you look at, for example, all of the... the, 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 the if you look at, for example, the uh, Ikhwan Muslimin, where, where, were, where was Ikhwan Muslimin born? We, where, was the, the, where is the headquarters of Ikhwan Muslimin? It's in Cairo. It's in Egypt, right? And for the last 90, 100 years, what have they done in Egypt when it comes to demolishing qubur and demolishing mathalan tombs and stopping people from committing shirk or warning people against tawheed? What are they, where are their juhud? Where, yani, where are their athar? A da'wah, you look at the athar of the da'wah before you look at anything else. Any person's da'wah, you look at their athar. If you look at them here in the UK, for example, their marakis and their centers, you'll see their, most of their juhud are just general lectures. They have da'wah ashwa'iyya. They, they have a chaotic da'wah. One day, it, the, one week, they're doing ta, uh, the, the tafsir of Surah Al-Asr. The week after that, the tafsir of Surah Al-Yusuf. The week after that, um, lectures on envy and jealousy. The week after that, Surah Al-Yusuf. The week, there is no nidam. It's a chaotic da'wah. It's basically what they're doing is they're just filling the time with some general umur amma, general stuff. All of this is to you him and nas so that they may yushirun and nas they may deceive the people into thinking that they have some da'wah. When in reality, this is not the da'wah of the anbiya and the mursaleen. Their da'wah is not a da'wah that has a strategy. It is a chaotic da'wah and um, that's the best case scenario. Also, to prove, my brothers, that Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they don't really know what Tawheed is, and they don't have any ihtimam and concern for Tawheed, let us listen to one of their figureheads, Umar al-Tilmisani, from the main students of Hassan al-Banna. He said regarding the verse, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ جَاءُوكَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولُ لَوَجَدُوا اللَّهُ تَوَّابًا رَحِيمًا In this verse, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا لِيُطَاعَ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Allah says, وَلَوْ أَنَّهُمْ إِذْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ If only when they transgressed against themselves with sins, جَاءُوكَ They came to you, أو محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم, فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا اللَّهَ And they sought forgiveness from Allah, وَاسْتَغْفَرَ لَهُمُ الرَّسُولِ and the messenger, يعني the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sought forgiveness for them. According to aqeedah, the, the, all of the mufassirun and the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that this verse is talking about when the Prophet was alive sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Sahaba could go to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was alive and seek and ask him to seek forgiveness for, from Allah azza wa on their behalf. Tayyip? Now, that is the aqeed of Ahlul Surah wal Jama'ah. What does Umar al Misali say? He says, Qal al some people say, and he's referring to the scholars of Ahlul Surah wal Jama'ah, Qal al Ba'du, Inna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yastaghfir lahum ila ja'u hayyan faqat. Some people say that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he only seeks forgiveness for them uh, if they go to him while he was alive. And I, he says, لم أتبين سبب التقييد في الآية عند الاستغفار بحياة الرسول. It's not clear to me why the verse is only restricted to the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. And there is nothing in the ayah that indicates to this restriction. يعني he's saying the restriction of the fact that this ayah is only restricted to when the Prophet was alive صلى الله عليه وسلم. ولذا he says, I أراني أميل إلى الأخذ بالرأي. Um, and that's why I am leaning more towards the opinion that says that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we can go to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even after his death and seek forgiveness and seek, and seek his intercession to forgive uh, intercession in the sight of Allah so that, and seek his intercession so that he asks Allah to forgive us. This is clear shirk, my brothers. This is clear shirk. This is the shirk of Quraysh. What he's calling to is the shirk, is the shirk of Quraysh. And then he says, فَلَا دَاعِيَ إِذَنْ لِلْتَشَدُّدِ فِي النَّكِيرِ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَعْتَقِدَ فِي كَرَامَةِ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ عَلَىٰ مَنْ يَعْتَقِدُ فِي كَرَامَةِ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ 
واللجوء إليهم في قبورهم الطاهرة والدعاء فيها عند الشدائد. He says then there's no need for us to be extreme in our uh, rejection and nakir in our يعني in in rebuking. Uh, we shouldn't rebuke basically, and we shouldn't stop those people who believe in the karama of the awliya, the miracles of the awliya, and the fact that you are you should go to them in their graves, in their pure graves. He said and make dua to them in times of uh, ad adversity in times of adversity so you can see here Umar al-Misani here one of the major figureheads of Ikhwan al-Muslimin calling to sh a shirk al-Akbar so this clearly shows you my brothers that this whole manhaj of Ikhwan al-Muslimin this whole group is based is a group that has does not know Tawheed they don't know what shirk is and the, the group itself called to Ash-Shirk Al-Akbar. And Hassan Al-Turabi, another figurehead of Ikhwan Al-Muslimin um, in Sudan, he basically said, um, basically he's talking about the, Salaf the Salafis that are in Sudan. He said, Innahum, يعني these Salafis, يَهْتَمُّونَ بِالْأُمُورِ الْعَقَائِدِيَ وَشِرْكِ الْقُبُورِ These Salafis, all they care about is shirk is basically aqidah and tawheed and the shirk of the graves. السياسي, and they don't really care about political shirk. They also call this shirk al qusur the shirk of the man of the castles. Then look at what he says, this ikhwani. We will leave these quburiyin, let's leave them alone, making yatufun hawla quburihim. حتى نصل إلى قبة البرلمان. Look at what he says. He says, let us abandon and leave these uh, قبوريون making tawaf around the qubur. Let's leave them com to commit their shirk um, until we reach parliament. Until we reach parliament. So you can see, my brothers, all of the ikhwanis, wherever they are in the world, their main purpose is, is getting to the hukum, is the kursi, the chair. They don't care about shirk. They don't care about tawheed. They don't care about uh, يعني, stopping the people from falling into jahannam, guiding the people, teaching the people the haq, the truth. These are things that don't concern them. What concerns them is making sure that they get to the hukum. Get to madha, to the hukum and get to parliament. That's the only thing that concerns them. Concerns them. And they will do everything in their power to get to that. And you all learnt the qa'idah, the qa'idah, al to tubarrir al wasila. The ends justify the means. And that means that they will do whatever is necessary to get to their objective, which is madha, which is al wusulu ila al hukum. You learnt yesterday, you heard Sayyid Qutb and his words yesterday, you heard Hassan al Banna, you've heard uh, Umar al Tilmisani, you've heard Hassan al Turabi, you've heard all of them speaking, right? You've, and you've heard their statements. And all of them agree in this. So this is a, so the Ikhwani that's in Sudan, and the Ikhwani that's in Saudi Arabia, the Ikhwani that's in Egypt, and the Ikhwani that's here in the UK, they all have that main purpose. The one here in the UK, his main purpose is to make sure that he doesn't, yani the ones here in the UK, they will enter politics, and their main aim in entering politics is to make sure that they have a foothold, and they monopolize the da'wah here in the UK, and they... They will perhaps focus on becoming, uh, not learning and seeking knowledge themselves, but they may focus on becoming masjid trustees, or for example, they may focus in becoming method and the heads of certain Islamic centers, or the heads of, for example, masajid, so that they control who comes, who gives da'wah, who doesn't give da'wah, who, يعني, what is spoken, what types of activities are given, all of these things, and their main aim is matter to keep things to keep the status quo as they are and to make sure that the people in the masjid, no matter who they are, 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 يعني, are, يعني, are kept happy because the donations come from the people in the masjid. So the people in the masjid must be kept happy. So even if the people in the masjid, for example, يعني, Alhamdulillah, the masjid are open for everyone. So if the people in the masjid or the, يعني, have certain mistakes, مثلا, it is upon the da'iyah to rectify this, right? This is the door of the Anbiya and the Mursaleen, right? The issue isn't why are people 
making errors or why are people ignorant when it comes to when it comes to Tawheed that's not the issue the issue is why are Ikhwan Muslimin stopping the ulama or, and stopping the du'at or certain du'at from teaching the people the haqq and the truth this is the issue people will always make mistakes in, in Tawheed people will always be ignorant of certain things of the Sharia that's part and parcel of life right but the issue is that Ikhwan Muslimin they have placed a barrier or they try to place a barrier between the Shabab between the between their audience rather and between whoever is teaching them the haqq and the truth um, so what do they do what do ikhwan muslimin do so when if tawhid isn't is something that they don't like to be spoken about in depth um, how do they what what are some of the things that they do so ikhwan muslimin the things that they focus on nowadays especially in the uk is al mawaid al amma general admonishments or or heart softeners or raqaiq um uh, Shaykh uh, Salih al Shaykh, um, he has a he says regarding this, he says, بعض الناس يظن أن الدعوة لا تكون إلا بالمواعظ أو المحاضرات أو بالذهاب إلى القرى أو إلقاء الكلمات في الأمور العامة التي يتكلم الناس فيها. He says some people they think that دعوة um, لا تكون that دعوة um, shouldn't be that that the only form of da'wah that should be given is al mawa'id al muhadarat is um, general admonishments, general admonishments and general lectures, or going touring around the country, or the habil al qura going to different towns, or ilqa al kalimat, or giving reminders fil umur al am on general matters that people. Uh, that people in that particular moment are talking about يعني following trends following trends وهذا غير الصحيح and this is something that is that is incorrect because he says لأن الأنبياء هم أكمل الدعاة وكلامهم إنما كان في حق الله جل وعلا وتوحيده وعبادته and because the أنبياء the prophets هم أكمل الدعاة they are the most correct and they are the most complete dua. They are the most perfect du'at. وَكَلَامُهُمْ And their speech, إِنَّمَا كَانَ فِي حَقِّ اللَّهِ جَلَّ وَعَلَى And their speech is only regarding the haqq of Allah Azza wa Jal and his tawheed and his ibadah. He also says, in فِي مَوْتِنِ آخر, He says, He says, وَمَنْ تَأَمَّلَ فِي وَاقِعِ مُعْظَمِ He says, um, نعم. So this is basically in a book called Al Basira to Fi Da'wati Il Allah. And this book is authored by Dr. Aziz ibn Farhan. And it has been checked and basically uh, by Sheikh Salih al Shaykh. In this book, uh, it says, Woman ta'amala fi waqi mu'adam il mushtamaat al ismail islami al mu'asira. Whoever, I'm just trying to summarize it, inshallah. Whoever looks at the waqi' and the hal of most of the communities, um, the Islamic communities nowadays, wajada anna mu'adam al-mukhalafat al-kubra, he will find that many of the mukhalafat, many of the mistakes, many of the, uh, many of the mistakes or major mistakes, many major mistakes have basically spread within these uh, societies and mujtama'at. And then he says, that the reason for this هو التقصير العظيم من قبل الدعاة إلى الله في تقرير مسائل العقيدة. The reason for this is التقصير العظيم is that there are major shortcomings from certain duat who call to Allah when it comes to clarifying and teaching people مسائل العقيدة, issues of عقيدة, and calling to Tawheed. Um, and and then he says in the next page. He says, um, from, he says, from the, some of the shubah that these people use, some of the uh, shubah, yani some of the doubts that these people use, is da'wah ba'dihim, is that some of them will say, and had a zaman, yani when, you t- <coughs> when you tell them, why don't you call to tawheed, why don't you call to aqidah, they will say, and had a zaman, that this era, يختلف عن زمان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Is it this era that we're in, this period that we're alive in, is different to the period of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. 
وأنه لا يوجد ما يمكن أن يركز عليه يركز عليه في الدعوة إلى الله من الأمور الشركية والقضايا العقدية. And that there is no in this era that we live in that we can't really focus on um, issues pertaining to shirk and issues pertaining to aqida. And also they say أن الحديث عن العقيدة ومحاربة الشرك وجعلها من أولويات الدعوة يثير مشاعر الكثيرين من المسلمين. They say that speaking about aqida, talking about shirk, and making this a priority in da'wah will cause conflict and fitna and cause people to, come, to become angry. Mimman alifu al bid'ah because people have got used to bid'ah. Do you understand the issue, my brother? So, um, if so the ikhwani doesn't really mind if bid'ah uh, is spread in his mujtama, in his as long as there are many people that come to his um, to his congregation or to his center, and it is very strange that, that these people don't have um, this protective jealousy for the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. يعني الله عز وجل he said اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتمنت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Today I have perfected for you your religion, completed my favor upon you, and chosen for you Islam. Um, يعني as a as a as a deen, as a way of life and as a religion. يعني when this ayah was was revealed, it meant that the Islam was perfect. So anyone who added anything to al Islam, then this person was is claiming that Islam is not perfect, as Imam Malik mentioned. <coughs> also, my brothers, we learned yesterday also that Ikhwan uh, Muslimin, they they. Uh, or Hassan al-Banna and his followers were Asha'ira and were Mufawwidah. <coughs> so, as for the Ikhwanis in the UK, as for the Ikhwanis in the UK, um, as mentioned, they, don't, they also don't place great importance to inviting to Tawheed and Aqeedah for a number of reasons, as you've heard, to summarize. The first reason, they say that, people, that the people that come to our masjid and our community are Muslims and we want to focus on getting them to stop sinning. So they're already Muslims, they already say La ilaha illallah and we want to focus on getting them to stop sinning, to stop uh, يعني, committing other major sins. And this is a khalal fil mu'taqad, my brothers. Because, la shaka fi dhalik, if your da'wah is focused on tawheed, you're teaching people about Allah Rabbul Alameen. And you're teaching people about Allah, and you're instilling in their hearts the love of Rabbul Alameen, of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if a Muslim loves Allah Azza wa Jal, and his love for Allah increases, and he learns about tawheed, he learns about shirk, Tawheed, he realizes and actualizes Tawheed, then this will cause his Iman to increase. When his Iman increases, then automatically this will cause him to become, to sin less, to sin less and to leave Rubama, to leave these major sins. That's not to say that we shouldn't also warn people against major sins. La shakka fi dhalika, we should. We should warn people about you know, the dangers of and the يعني, خطورت شرب الخمر, drinking alcohol, zina, uh, يعني, consuming interest, uh, يعني, drugs, um, all, of the, all of the sins that people do. لا شك في ذلك we should. But we shouldn't make this the focus of our da'wah. The ikhwan is here in the UK, they've made this the focus of their da'wah. So you will rarely find them, for example, talking about the tafasil al-tawheed, the different issues, issues of tawheed. Mathalan, in Kitab al Tawheed, there are 67 chapters, subhanAllah. If you look at these 67 chapters, you will find that Shaykh Muhammad al Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he spoke about every aspect of Tawheed, he spoke about different types of shirk, shirk al Asr, shirk al Akbar, he spoke about Mathalan al Riya, a shirk of al Riya, minor shirk. From minor shirk, there is a Riya showing off, Iradat al Insan bi Amalihi Dunya, a person. <coughs> Seeking through their righteous actions, the dunya, which is different to riya. For example, he spoke about at tamaim, amulets, wearing the the wearing of amulets. 
he spoke about at tabarruk bil ashjar wal ahjar wa nahwiha yani seeking blessings uh, from trees from stones and he spoke about other things and there for example I'll give you an example my brothers just recently a few uh, I think a few months ago there was a trend going on a trend on social media um, on uh, there was a trend where certain people were trying to um, I think they call it they were trying to uh, actualize something yani if they repeated something I forgot the term that they called it manifestation manifestation, manifestation. Manifestation basically is a trend where people will repeat certain things and then it will manifest itself in real life, right? Manifestation, right? And this is, my brothers, this is shirk. This is a type of shirk and it is in Kitab al-Tawheed. Where are, the, where are these ikhwan du'at? Where, why don't they speak about these types of things? Because for them, يعني, ikhwani fillah, you have to realize that the ikhwani will only talk about a certain issue if it helps his cause there is no that yani his his purpose is not litakuna kalimatullah hi al uliya his purpose is litakuna kalimatul hizb hi al uliya so the the ikhwani for example da'iya if he goes to a certain place he's going to try to make sure that his image isn't spoiled his reputation his image and he's going to try to make sure that his social media followers are not going to leave him. So he's going to make sure that he says the, يعني, what comes out of his mouth conforms to what the people, or, يعني, what the people already are, are upon or what people like him to hear. And even the, some of them, they, they may not celebrate the Prophet's birthday وسلم, but يضعفون, they're too afraid or too weak, for example, to um, outright blatantly say, explicitly say to their followers, celebrating the Prophet's birthday وسلم, is haram and is a bid'ah. They may go beat around the bush, مثلاً, and go around in circles and say, we have to love the Prophet وسلم, according to the sunnah, we have to love the Prophet according to how he saw it. Yani, things that, for example, that even the person, the person listening, if a person who celebrates the Prophet's birthday is listening, وسلم, then that person will, will love this and he will, he will continue to celebrate the Prophet's birthday. That may even cause him to continue celebrating, celebrating the Prophet's birthday because he didn't hear that this is bid'ah. Does that make sense, Ikhwan? Yani the Prophet, وسلم, my, my brothers, one day he was, walk, he was with his companions and some of the, the companions, they just accepted Islam. And they saw a tree that in the Jahiliya days they used to hang their swords just before they went to battle. They used to hang their swords for barakah, right? For barakah. And they saw, they, to, they said to the Prophet, and they said, Ya Rasulullah, اجعل لنا ذات أنواط كما لهم ذات أنواط. O Messenger of Allah, make for us. Something similar to this, something we can use as a barakah and as a blessing to place our swords for. يعني, something we used to do. Did the Prophet ﷺ say, "Let يعني, I need to be subtle here. They've just accepted Islam. I need to wait until their iman increases, and then I will tell them this is shirk." Or did the Prophet ﷺ rebuke them for this? The Prophet ﷺ he said, "Allahu Akbar, inna has sunan." قلتم والذي نفسي بيده كما قالت بنو إسرائيل اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آله قال إنكم قوم تجهلون. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم severely he chastised them and he rebuked them. So the, يعني the, this شبهة that we hear all the time we need to use حكمة when it comes to دعوة يعني they use the word حكمة without any حكمة يعني سبحان الله yeah, and the word hikmah is a word that has been uh, shismu, yani, misused many times. So they will go to a mujtama or a community where people, subhanAllah, may have certain faults, may have certain issues. Or these people, methana, have not really been exposed to uh, the proper tawheed, yani, tawheed bi tafsilhi, with tafsil, right? And they won't speak about these issues, but they'll speak about general matters. If you are a da'iya, my brothers, if you're a da'iya and you go to a community 
and you, you're going to spend some time in that community, why don't you go through the books of Tawheed? Instead of giving general lectures, why don't you go through Thalath al-Usul, Qawaid al-Arba', Kashf al-Shubahat, Kitab al-Tawheed, go through these books. And subhanAllah, the shuruhat are mali'ah. The explanations of these books are everywhere, alhamdulillah. You don't have to be a graduate from is the Islamic University of Medina al-Jama'a Islamiyyah to actually be able to teach these books. Alhamdulillah, everything is mutadawun, everything is, is accessible for us now. You have the, sh- the scholars now have, have ex- explained these books in detail. Open these explanations and read it to the people, subhanAllah. So, they say people are Muslims and we want to focus on getting them to stop sinning. They also say we need, to, we need people to come to the masjid. <coughs> they say we want people to come to the masjid. All this talk about Tawheed, Shirk and Deviant sects drives people away from the masjid. So these are just some of their shubuhat. The second, so that's what we got Tawheed. The second uslub or the second method when it comes to Ikhwan al-Muslimin and how they misguide the youth and the shabab is ibadu shabab an al amal bi kull al kitab wa sunna wa ikhtiyar ma yattafiqu ma hawahum the ikhwan al muslimin they will try to to place a barrier between the shabab and acting in accordance to all of the kitab and the sunna not the kitab and the sunna but all of the kitab and the sunna as you know my brothers from um, and they will use the Qur'an and the Sunnah, they will use parts of the Qur'an and the Sunnah that, uh, that basically conform to whatever they're upon. There is a principle, my brothers, that are, is mentioned by the scholars regarding this, and with regards to the difference between Ahlul Bid'ah and Ahlul Sunnah, and how they use the Qur'an and the Sunnah when it comes to Al-Sidlan. The ulama, they say that Ahlul Bid'ah ya'taqidun ثُمَّ يَسْتَدِلُّونَ وَأَهْلُ السُنَّةِ يَسْتَدِلُّونَ ثُمَّ يَعْتَقِدُونَ That's the main difference. So the people of innovation, Ahlul Bid'a, for the first thing they do is they have their corrupt aqidah and ideology. Then, once they have their aqidah, يَسْتَدِلُّونَ Then they look for an evidence that conforms or agrees with whatever their aqidah is. Whatever their aqidah is. As for Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a, then... The first thing they do is they look for the evidence and the delil. Once they find the delil, they make sure that their desires and their, op- their opinions and their creed and ideology conforms with the delil. Conforms matter with the delil. Conforms with the delil. Naam. Allah Azza wa he says, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, well, it is not befitting for a believing man and a believing woman, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنُ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ That when Allah and His Messenger, they, uh, يعني they, play, they establish a command, um, أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمُ الْخِيَرَ That they have a choice in the matter. That they have a choice in the matter. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ by Allah, they will not believe. Hatta yuhakimuka until they make you Muhammad as a judge between them. Fi ma shajara baynahum in that which they disagree with. Thumma la yajidu fi anfusihim haraj and then they don't find in their nufus, in their hearts, any haraj, any uh, يعني dislike in mimma qadayta in that which you have. Uh, in in the command that you have that you have given in the in the command that you have judged or in your judgment, where you sallimu taslima and that they uh, submit themselves to Allah azza azza wa jal. Um, so that's with regards to uh, the yani the al manhaj as salafi. As for ikhwan al muslimin, as mentioned previously, um, ikhwan al muslimin they first look for they first have their corrupt aqidah and then they look for a dalil. Um, as an example for this, um, the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ This verse, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ The Ikhwanis, um, they use this verse as a, an evidence, as a proof 
to make takfir of the hukam and to make takfir of the shu'ub. Because al-kafirun here, according to the ikhwanis, it is major kufr. It is major kufr. But if you go back to the tafsir of this verse, the tafsir of the salaf, the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas, Turjuman al Quran, Abdullah ibn Abbas, he says, Lays al kufr al ladi tadhabuna ilayh. It is as though Ibn Abbas knew, yani subhanallah, yani from his fitna and his firasa, it is as though subhanallah that he knew what the, question, the, the questioner wanted. And he said, it is not the kufr that you, you, that you, that you think, which is major kufr, but it is kufrun duna kufr. It is the minor kufr. It is madha, the minor kufr. So, ikhwan muslimin, they chose to ignore the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas and the tafsir of the Salaf in this verse and they, they ignored all of this and they said that this ayah is, means major kufr and because of this they made takfir of the hukam and they made takfir of madha of the shu'ub or anyone who even uh, defends them. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, to just emphasize this point, Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَوْ كَانَ خَيْرًا مَا سَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ Allah Azza wa Jal, here he says, those who disbelieved, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who disbelieved, they say, يعني those who disbelieved here, meaning the Quraysh, meaning Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, Ubay ibn Khalaf, and Quraysh, they say, regarding those who believed, يعني, the, the poor from the, from the, from the Muslimin, the poor Muhajirun such as Suhaib al-Rumi, Salman al-Farisi, Bilal ibn Abi Rabah and some of the Sahaba, um, they say, the Mushrikun, they say regarding these Muslims, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Regarding the Mu'mineen, لَوْ كَانَ خَيْرًا If this was any good, يعني Islam, if it was any good, مَا سَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ They would not have preceded us in it. Ibn Kathir, he said regarding the tafsir of this verse, وَأَمَّا أَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ As for أَهْلُ السُّنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ يَقُولُونَ They say, فِي كُلِّ قَوْلٍ وَفِعْلٍ Regarding every statement and every action, لَمْ يَثْبُتْ عَنِ الصَّحَابَةِ That was not affirmed from the Sahaba, that did not come from the Sahaba, لَوْ كَانَ خَيْرًا If it was any khair, if there was any good in it, لَسَبَقُونَ إِلَيْهِ They would have preceded us in it. Does that make sense? So, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, it's very clear, their manhaj is wadih, kashams. If the Sahaba didn't do it, there was no khair in it. Because if there was any khair in this innovative act, then the Sahaba would have been the first to apply it. They would, be the, they would have been the first to do it. Shaykh al-Islam mentions in Al-Fatawa regarding the Khawarij and how they treat the Sunnah um, and the Khawarij when they don't really understand the Hadith um, do they go to the scholars? Do they go back to the books of Ahlul Ilm? لا. He said regarding them فَيَطْعَنُونَ تَارَةً فِي الْإِسْنَادِ Sometimes they, they basically uh, claim that the Isnad is weak يعني what, and then, يعني, في المتن, and sometimes they claim that the metan itself is weak. For indeed, they are not people that should be followed or trusted when it comes to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Wasallam, even in the Quran itself. The third uslub. <coughs> the third uslub, the third uslub or method when it comes to Ikhwan al Muslimin and how they um, misguide the, the, the Shabab is that they, Ikhwan al Muslimin, are known for compromising their religion in the pursuit of their objectives, in the pursuit of their worldly objectives. As for Ahlul, uh, as for Al Manhaj al Salafi, then Al Manhaj al Salafi is a manhaj that does not allow any compromise when it comes to Tawheed and when it comes to Aqeedah. And it, when it comes to these matters, 
the khilaf is between ahl sunnah wal jama'ah and between the people of innovation. Does that make sense? There is no khilaf between ahl sunnah wal jama'ah. So they don't allow that for there to be any khilaf. There is no compromise in matters of aqidah. There is no compromise in matters of tawheed. However, the Sunni, a Salafi, he or she will compromise and is encouraged to compromise in uh, matters pertaining to themselves, in their personal rights, in their personal hukuk. They should go, they should compromise. This is what our religion instructs us to do. As for compromising in matters of the religion, in matters of tawheed, in matters of aqidah, mathalan, compromising, what do we mean by compromising? We mean by compromising, a da'iyah, mathalan, is invited to a platform to speak at a platform. And this da'iyah should know the hal of the people, right? Or he should ask around. And before he's given the platform, the people who have invited him are te- give him a topic to speak about, and then they try to program him and say to him, do not speak about, please, these issues. Don't speak about, for example, issues pertaining... They, they come across and they say, don't speak about politics. That's the first thing that they do. Don't speak about politics. But what they mean by politics is... They mean by politics... <coughs> they mean by politics... And don't speak about, for example, issues pertaining to khuruj al al-hukam. Issues pertaining to the, 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 the rulers or issues pertaining to any, for example, matter where they think, where يعني, Islam has a say in it, but there is some sort of a political element to it. So this da'i, مثلاً, is told, don't speak about certain issues, but you are allowed to speak about certain issues. And, for example, they may even tell him, we have in our congregation people who follow, مثلاً, Jama'at al-Tabliq, مثلاً. We have people who are upon the manhaj of Jama'at al-Tabliq in our organization or in our masjid. And we don't want you to offend them. We don't want to really offend them. So uh, please don't talk about these issues of aqeed or these issues of tawheed. Just talk about the dangers of envy and jealousy. This is compromising. If this da'i accepts this and he says, okay, no problem, I'll only talk about envy and jealousy, then in reality this da'i is not someone who is inviting to Allah Azza wa Jal. This person is inviting to himself. He's going there only to <coughs> promote himself, not to promote the religion of Allah Azza wa Because if he was a nasih, if he was someone who was someone who had sincerity in his heart for the religion of Allah Azza wa he would tell them, I want to talk about these issues. Let me speak about these issues. But I will speak about these issues in a, mat- in a manner that does not offend them. Yani obviously the da'i shouldn't go in fully attacking tabligh and saying you are all uh, ashab al-dalal antum fi jahannam. La. You, you, should, you should use hikmah and wisdom. Call them. Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal mu'idati al-hasana. Use hikmah and wisdom but also clarify the truth. Clarify that this is not from the manhaj of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Clarify to them the haqq and the truth in a nice soft manner. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَا كَانَ الرِّفْقُ فِي شَيْءٍ إِلَّا زَانَ وَمَا نُزِعَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا شَانَ Rifq and gentleness and leniency is not placed into something except that it increases it in beauty. It's not removed from something except that it makes it ugly. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ فَعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ يعني, being Rifq is important, but these ikhwanis, they think Clarifying the truth is shiddah. Can you imagine, my brothers? They have interpreted teaching the people the haqq and tawheed and clarifying the people the truth, talking about deviant sects. They have interpreted this to mean shiddah, to mean uh, extremism, and to mean for يعني, something that, is, that should be, we should stay away from. When in reality, not speaking about these issues... And not clarifying the truth, this in and of itself is treachery and betrayal. If you're a da'i who has learned and know that what the people in front of you are upon is batil, why won't you try and be the cause of hidayah and guidance for your brothers that are in front of you? Why? Why would you try to compromise your religion? This is what we mean, my brothers, regarding compromise. So, al-manhaj al-salafi is not a manhaj that does not compromise. It, it, it is not a manhaj, sorry, that compromises. It is a manhaj 
that speaks the haq and the truth at all times, but with gentleness, with leniency, with hikmah, and with wisdom. So, um, uh, as for the ikhwanis, my brothers, the ikhwa, um, na'am, that's with regards to na'am. So, as for the, for the ikhwanis, what they do and the methods that they use when it comes to this particular issue is um, that they um, place labels on Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. These labels that they place on Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is labels such as, from these labels are labels to cause people to run away from the Haqq and the truth, to cause people to steer away from the Haqq and the truth. So these labels, for example, include, they may even, ironically speaking, they may even uh, claim that these Salafis, they are takfiriyun, ironically, subhanAllah. And what they, do, they did is, they created or they, they divided or they created this innovative division and they said there is a Salafi, Salafiyya Jihadiyya, there is a Salafiyya Ilmiyya or Salafiyya Takfiriyya. There is a type of Salafiyya that is a Jihadiyya or a Salafiyya that causes, that does Takfir. They're describing themselves. But basically to cause disunity, to cause confusion amongst the ranks of the Salafis and those Salafis that haven't really learnt uh, about Da'u Salafiyya, they created this, these types of um, labels. Also, um, for example, the da'wah of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, they created the label of Wahhabiyyah. So anyone, for example, who calls it Tawheed, they call this person a Wahhabi. You've heard this before. Um, for example, with regards to the da'wah of Sheikh Muhammad al-Aman, Aman al-Jami, uh, ta'ala, anyone who calls to his da'wah, anyone three minutes, inshallah, anyone who calls to his da'wah, they, um, they said... Um, uh, they said basically, um, this person is a jami or a jamiya. Okay, so, uh, or for example, Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Rabi, ta'ala, who was one of the first scholars to actually expose Ikhwan al Muslimin, Sayyid Qutb Hassan al Banna, may Allah Azza wa preserve him. Anyone who, uh, uh, who, who, who basically who they think. Is following the, 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 the way of Sheikh Rabi' and the manager of Sheikh Rabi', they call them Madakhila. Yani Madakhila, Jamiya, Wahhabiya, yani all of these. And if you ask them what are these things, what is a Wahhabi, what is a Jami, what is a Madkhali, they won't have any answer to this. They don't know. And you, you, you know you've beaten them when that's the only argument that they come with. You know they have nothing in their locker. They have no proofs, they have no ilm, no knowledge, when you're giving them adilla and evidences and a hadith, and the only thing that they can come with is, you're just a madkhali, you're just a jami, you're just another wahhabi. Ya akhi, what is wahhabiya? I asked one of them, what is wahhabiya? Al-wahhab we know is one of the names of Allah Azza wa Jal. Are you ascribing me to the name of Allah? What is what, mahi al-wahhabiya? What is madakhila? What is jamia? They have no response and they have no answer. So um, they have these uh, يعني, uh, labels to cause people, my brothers, to stay away from or to run away from the haq. Um, finally, inshallah ta'ala, I'm just going to conclude this before we move on to, before we have a break. Um, Hassan al-Banna. Um, when he became a teacher, an official teacher in his uh, Ismailiya, he was first a teacher in Marhalat al So he used to teach young children um, in Medina al Ismailiya in Egypt. He found, when he first became a teacher, he found that there were two uh, opposing factions or groups, um, da'wah groups. The first was a da'wah salafiyya, da'wah al haqq. And the second was al hisafiya the Sufi at the time. And he found that they were basically at a, يعني, in parallel, and these two groups were groups that were basically opposing each other directly. The Salafis were refuting the Sufis, the Sufis were refuting the Salafis. What did he do? Instead of, instead of Hassan al banna what did he, instead of going to the, to the in, instead of aligning himself with the Haq and with the people of the truth, he basically created a third group which was Ikhwan al-Muslimin, which was Mada Ikhwan al-Muslimin to try and bring them together. And he said to his followers, let us not 
uh, mingle in or let us not uh, يعني, uh, mix ourselves with these two fa- factions and let us basically go out of this khilaf and, and, and do our own thing basically. Uh, so, كان يدعو إلى البعد عن مواطن الخلاف بين الطرفين. So he basically was calling his followers to, to stay away from this, this type of khilaf. And this is, my brothers, one of the asalib of Ikhwan al-Muslimin. Here, especially in the UK. They will come, some of these Ikhwanis, they will come across as people of justice and adl. And when they, when they speak, they will say, Ikhwan, we need to be brothers. We need to stay away from fitna. We need to stay... يعني, the fitna he's talking about is the haq, da'u salafiya, the haq, and some batil, right? So inst- he wants to come across as someone who is muhayid, someone who is impartial. So he, he will say he won't actually give you his opinion on a particular matter or issue. He will basically just remain in the middle. He's not in the middle. You can't be in the middle in these issues. You need to have... You need to be with the haq. I can't say, for example, if you ask me and you say to me, يعني, what do you think of celebrating the Prophet's birthday, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And there's on my left a Salafi, and on my right someone who celebrates the Prophet's birthday, a Sufi. I can't say, listen, Ikhwan, we need to come together and be brothers. We are in the UK. We live in Bilad al-Kufr. We are already outnumbered. We need to come together. If I say this, this is khiyana and, and betrayal and treachery. I need to speak the truth and say, and, and say that uh, celebrating the Prophet's birthday وسلم, is a bid'ah and an innovation, full stop. Khalas. They won't say this because their fa- father in misguidance, Hassan al-Banna, he already laid, this is one of the, the, the turuq of the firqa known as al bannaiyya Let's have a break inshallah ta'ala and we will continue after the break. Wa jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.